What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220-1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about RAM types, single, dual, and triple channels, parity versus non-parity bits, and error correcting code. Let's talk about the purpose of RAM real quick. So random access memory. This is a form of computer memory that can be read and changed in any order, typically used to store working data and machine code. RAM allows data items to be read or written in almost the same amount of time, irrespective of the physical location of data inside the memory. In contrast with other direct access data storage medias, such as HDD, CDs, DVDs and older magnetic tapes and drum memory, the time required to read write data items varies significantly depending on their physical location on the recording medium due to mechanical limitations such as media rotation speeds and arm movement. In today's technology, RAM takes the form of integrated circuit chips with metal oxide semiconductor memory cells. RAM is normally associated with volatile types of memory where stored information is lost if power is removed, although non-volatile RAM has also been developed. And here is a pretty little chart of RAM where you can look at your own leisure on my website, Technology G, in case you want to get read up on the latest and greatest concerning RAM. So dim and dim memory. So small outline, dual inline memory modules. So dim. This is a type of computer memory built using integrated circuits. So dims are a smaller alternative to a dim being roughly half the size of a regular dim where they are utilized in laptops due to the compressed form factors of laptops in comparison to that of desktops. So what you need to know here is so dim is for laptops and dims are for desktops. DDR2 SD RAM, so double data rate 2 synchronous dynamic random access memory is the successor to DDR SD RAM. It offers new features, greater bandwidth, where more data can be passed through the RAM chip at one time, and lesser power consumption than its predecessor. Like standard DDR memory, DDR2 memory can send data on both the rising and falling edges of the processor's clock cycles. This nearly doubles the amount of work the RAM can do in any given amount of time. Next, we have DDR3 SD RAM. So DDR3 SD RAM is available in both DIM and so DIM form factors. DDR3 SD RAM is similar to DDR2, but uses approximately 30% less power and can transfer data twice as fast. DDR3 supports a maximum data transfer rate of 6,400 megabytes per second while DDR2 supports up to 3,200 megabytes per second. The faster memory speed prevents data transfer bottlenecks when it comes to processing large amounts of data. Next, we have DDR4 SD RAM, which is the current standard. In DDR4, this is the fourth generation of DDR RAM designed to replace DDR3. The advantages of DDR4 include faster data transfer rates and larger capacities due to greater memory density, in addition to more memory banks where it has 16 rather than 8. DDR4 also operates at a lower voltage of 1.2 volts compared to 1.5 volts, making it more power efficient. Some notable DDR4 specifications are you have 64 gigs of maximum capacity per memory module where common capacities they include anywhere between 16 gigs and 32 gigs. You have 16 internal memory banks, 1600 megabytes to 3200 megabytes data transfer rates, 1.2 volts of electrical power is required, and then it has 288 pins in a regular DIM and 260 pins in a so dim. And here is a pretty little picture showing you the key notch placement of various DDR SD RAMs. This can help you identify which type of DDR stick that you're dealing with. And also note that you cannot just swap these things in and out. You need to have the proper socket that matches each DDR SD RAM stick that you're trying to place inside of your 
PC. Let's talk about single channel RAM. So single channel RAM, this operates on a 64-bit data channel, which means that it can push 64 bits of data down the pipe. That is 64 bits in total length. Then we have dual channels. So when it comes to adopting the multi-channel configuration, this means multiplying the effective channel width by the total count of available channels. When two identical modules where they have the same size, speed, and latency are installed in the proper sockets, the memory controller accesses them in interleaved mode for faster access. This is why almost all RAM upgrades are done in pairs of chips. The majority of systems with two pairs of sockets in contrasting colors implement dual channel operation so you would need to install the matching modules in the same color sockets let's talk about triple channel so triple channel ram this is designed to triple the speed of the ram bandwidth some triple channel motherboards use four sockets but for best performance the last socket should not be used on these systems now one thing to remember about single dual and triple channel memory is that the chips are not different for each the only difference is in the way the motherboard accesses the chips all right, let's talk about parity versus non parity. So, as data moves through computers, the possibility of errors can occur. Parity error detection was developed to notify the user of any data errors by adding a single bit to each byte of data, which is responsible for checking the integrity of the other eight bits while the byte is moved or stored. Once a single bit error is detected, the user receives an error notification. However, parity checking only notifies and does not correct a failed data bit. Some system error messages will tell you the logical location of the error, so you can reference system documentation to determine which module or modules to replace. Non-parity is memory chips that do not have a ninth bit used for parity checking. And finally, let's talk about error correction code or ECC. So in computing, an error correction code is used for controlling errors in data over unreliable or noisy communication channels. The central idea is the sender encodes the message with redundant information in the form of an ECC. The redundancy allows the receiver to detect a limited number of errors that may occur anywhere in the message and often to correct these errors without retransmitting. Mission. Most desktops do not support ECC, although some workstations and most servers do offer ECC support. Memory that uses ECC enables the system to correct single bit errors and notify you of large errors. Systems that offer ECC support may be enabled or disabled via the system BIOS, or it might be a standard feature. The parity bit and parity memory is used by ECC features to determine when the content of memory is correct corrupt and to fix single bit errors. Unlike parity checking, which only warns you of memory errors, ECC memory actually corrects the errors. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, of the following options, which incorrectly describes the functionality of parity RAM or parity memory? Is it Parity RAM can self-correct detected errors. Not all RAM offers parity checking. Parity checking will halt a process when discovering an error. Or parity RAM has one extra bit per byte. So which incorrectly describes the functionality of parity RAM or parity memory? And the correct answer is uh, parity RAM can self-correct detected errors is not a correct statement. It can warn you about those errors, but it cannot correct them. Next question. You are helping a friend build a new gaming PC. To save on cost, they have opted to buy a new motherboard but keep their existing DDR2 memory from their previous PC. After having some trouble getting the memory to fit into the motherboard, you check the motherboard manufacturer's documentation and find they recommend their own DDR3 memory. How should you proceed? Would you buy the recommended memory from the same manufacturer as the motherboard? Would you purchase DDR3 memory from any manufacturer? Would you purchase a DDR2 to DDR3 slot adapter? 
Or would you enable the DDR downgrade feature using a jumper on the motherboard's pins? So you're trying to build a new PC, you got a DDR2, you can't install it, they're recommending you upgrade to a DDR3. How should you proceed? You should purchase the DDR3 memory from any manufacturer. Now, I know the question stated that they wanted you to use the motherboard's recommended DDR3, but the reality is you can use any DDR3. It's a whole bunch of manufacturers out there that make DDR3 RAM. You can just go buy whichever one you want, drop it into the slot, and you're off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. And the final question is... SODEM is a more compact type of computer memory designed for desktop PCs. Is this true or is this false? The correct answer is uh, this is false. Remember, SODEMs are for laptops. DEMs are for desktops and workstations. SODEM stands for Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module. It is the smaller one. All right. So in summary, we have talked about RAM types, single channels, dual channels, triple channels, parity versus non-parity bits, and error correcting code. Now, if you felt like you have gotten something valuable out of this information, please go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go visit my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220-1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.